it's time for another episode of the Josh Cast. I remember the Josh Cast. Yes, he recorded it back in the 2000 teens before the dark times. Yes, those were the days when everyone was concerned with President Trump. <laughs> ah, I give anything for President Trump. Now, in 2278, our president is a giant bird. No one is sure how the bird was elected. Or am I confusing this with an episode of Animaniacs? Or Freakazoid? In which a giant chicken somehow became president of the United States. It all blends together in my mind. I think they have to go back and uh, I think they're going to they have to go back and if they're, if they're going to do anything and change anything to the Star Wars movies because George Lucas went back in the 90s and he added some things uh, and that's fair um, I mean it's it, it was his stuff he can do what he wants with it uh, but now if they were to do that again I do, I, I, and I do think they do need to do that again they need to go back and make some updates so that the the movies make more sense in our era and I think the big thing they have to do is they have to go back in and they have to insert the fact that people have podcasts um, I think at, at, at all eras, in, in all the Star Wars movies, someone needs to have a podcast. I mean, they sort of did it in Phantom Menace. The guys with two heads who were uh, talking about the pod race. I mean, technically, well, hey, that's a pod podcast. There you go. The pod podcast. Oh, my God. I'm sure I'm the first person to think of that. I bet the Clone Troopers had a podcast, just cloning around. I don't think the Sith Lords, well, what they would do is they, they would have somebody else have a podcast, but it would be like a puppet podcast that they were manipulating, so that's happening. And then the, the Dark Times would happen, so there'd be fewer podcasts in the Dark Times. They'd be underground park. Lando Calrissian, he would have a podcast, definitely. I think he would be podcasting at all points of his life. First podcast would be, you know, young, sexy Lando uh, and talking about, you know, flying through space, getting girls. Then he'd be more like a middle-aged podcast uh, where it's, uh, he's, you know, on the Cloud City and he's more mature and it's more like a Mark Maron, you know, WTF where he's bringing on all the people he, he conned and making amends, that would be that podcast. And then, now there'd be a new podcast that he would do with Ray, and it would be, you know, uh, dealing with old age. Yeah, I think all that needs to be retconned, if you will. If you will! Well, I won't. Well, okay then. So we've covered that. Um, I, uh... I was, I was listening to uh, WTF, actually, and Jane Fonda, and she was talking about how it's impossible to be in a relationship with an addict because they can't be there completely for you. And I really think I am an addict. Uh, I know I'm addicted to sugar, uh, and uh, I am beginning to wonder... I'm beginning to wonder how big of a deal it is because everyone, it feels to me like that a, a bigger deal is made of alcoholics or people who are addicted to, you know, the hard drugs. And I think it's become relatively common knowledge that sugar is addictive and that many, many people are addicted to sugar. But somehow, at this point, it seems, and maybe I'm just projecting or maybe I'm, I'm fantasizing, it, just, it seems more acceptable to be addicted to sugar than it is to be addicted to these other drugs. Uh, 
nobody's, they're not doing an intervention usually for somebody who's eating Skittles and saying, look, you got a problem. I mean, I'm sure in extreme cases, yes, when the person's hospitalized or, you know, there's issues of morbid obesity. But for those of us who are functional sugar addicts, I guess is the term for it, it's, it, it weirdly, it feels socially tolerated. Like, the thing that blows my mind is that I'm sitting there in, I don't know, is it elementary school, middle school, and uh, I'm in, they're, they're giving us the D.A.R.E. program, and they're telling us about all the horrible drugs, one of which at the time was marijuana. Ah, you can't have marijuana. No, 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 no. Marijuana, it's the gateway drug. Meanwhile... Every day at the cafeteria, what comes with lunch? A cookie. Let me. This is my average lunch at the cafeteria in elementary school. I, it was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And I assure you, um, the jelly... Uh, you know, I, 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 it resembled grape. You know, they, somebody in a lab made a computer model of grape and printed the jelly, and that was what was served to me, which was delicious, of course. I love, I mean, I love the art of, I almost, it's, what's weird, I love the artificial sugar, the processed sugar better than the actual sugar that's less sugary. I love the work they do in the labs. The food scientists, I love their work. I mean, I'm a huge fan. You know, the, the team behind Butterfinger, good for you. But at any rate, I'm sitting there learning all this stuff from Darren. Meanwhile, in the cafeteria, they're serving me peanut butter and jelly on white bread. So that's sugar, sugar, and sugar. And then a cookie as well. And then juice. So they're... (laughs) So basically, it's 100% sugar. Which is considered fine. Now, fast forward 20, 30 years. Marijuana... It's becoming legalized, considered medicinal, both for physical and psychological ailments, and sugar now is being linked to all different kinds of diseases. And as a result, what I'm learning is that we collectively are morons. And that it probably would have been better for me if they were serving marijuana in the cafeteria and warning me about sugar in the D.A.R.E. program. Because I've done what they said. I've never, t- I've never tried marijuana. I've never done any of those drugs. Uh, and I feel horrible. <laughs> so, my original thought on this is that if I'm addicted to something, I'm wondering if that means that, that there is a part of me that is not being ex- that is not accessible. That even if it's as simple as a sugar addiction, if I'm in a relationship, then I am not 100% there. Because that little percentage of me is thinking about sugar and the fix. And furthermore... I'm also wondering if that applies to not only, you know, relationships, but also my relationship to my job, my relationship to friends, my relationship to, you know, doing stand-up. If there, if that addiction is there, if, if it's another, if it's one of the other things that's getting in my way or getting in the way of being the best I can be in those other areas... And I think I'm doing all of this because I'm really I want to I want to quit sugar. I really do want to, because I, I just read so many. It causes so many problems, and I can I can tell that because there was a period of time where I was able to quit eat at least at least quit eating desserts, and my bowel habits were better, um, and uh, I I didn't feel as much of the highs and lows emotionally. I mean I notice a difference when I'm not on sugar. 
but the other thing that happens when I'm not on sugar is that the, I, the depression is, I feel the depression. I feel it. It's harder to run away from it. Uh, and I, uh, I'm tired. I really, I get tired. So these are the things I'm fighting. But if I want to be my complete self, then this is the uh, this is what I got to do. This is the next step. Well, this podcast has gotten rather philosophical, I should say. Not even philosophical. It's gotten it's gotten deep, man. Going deep with this. But then my concern as well: if it's deep, is it funny? Where are the jokes? Where are the jokes, my friend? Where are the jokes? Will I even publish this? Yeah, I'm going to publish this one. I think I'll publish this one. Tough cookie training. How dare you mock me by using the word cookie? Trophy King. That reminds me of something work-related I have to do that I haven't done in six months. Fabulous. Yes, indeed. These are the elements that I need to discuss. Seeing a truck that is in the middle of the street with the hazard lights on stopped. Always a concern. Always a concern. Now I'm just rambling, trying to think of something else to talk about. Don't try. Do. Do it or not. There is no try. You can hear more of that on the Yoda podcast, Yodacast, or Cast Yoda. Hmm. Strong following my podcast has. And here's where I want, would want to go into. Well, maybe I can. Maybe I can. To the podcast, welcome. Yoda am I. A special guest we have today. Announcing a special guest. Special very guest. Marin Mark we have. It's a pleasure to be here. Listen, I, you, I feel like, uh, Yoda, I feel like you, uh, you hate me. And I hate you. And I don't hate you. Hate you? Do I do not? Yeah. I, where do we get this thing? People got this thing that we hated each other. I don't know where that came from. Let's try to process this. I, I've become a huge Mark Maron fan. I listen to his podcast all the time. And that right there was probably the worst impression of Mark Maron. And Yoda, essentially. What? Let's just, let's break down what just happened there. Uh, no impression, no good impression on either end, on I, either way. The act out didn't uh, go anywhere. You know, by by all points, uh, you know, a, a colossal failure. But nevertheless, here we are. Nevertheless, here we are. Nevertheless, here we are in downtown Burbank. Nevertheless, here we are in down. Town Burbank. I enjoy Burbank. I really do. I think the 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 thing about Burbank is that I think the name Burbank matches the essence of Burbank. It's because it's 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 a, it's a normal sounding name, Burbank. And it's a name where you would expect. It's an you hear that name of a city, and then you're not surprised to find out there's a lot of great dentists here. And I'm stepping really close on a bit that Pat Oswalt did about Burbank, where he talks about how it was founded by a dentist named Dave Burbank, and it's like the one it was the one Wild West city that was not, you know, really founded in blood, and and you know it's there's no Deadwood story behind Burbank. Great Pat Oswald bit, uh, because I give credit where credit is due, here on the Josh Cast, Lando Cast. Ah, 
There's another bit I would love to not commit to. All right, well, uh, we're done.